So you've gotten your Forge server set up. And if you haven't, you need to go check out the video that's the at the top of your screen, as well as at the second link in the description down below. Because you need to set up a Forge server in order to add mods to your Minecraft server. I apologize for that being in a separate video, but YouTube doesn't like when we make 30 minute long tutorials these days, so we're gonna have to split these up a little bit. Again, I apologize for that, but nevertheless, you do need to go check that out. So if that's the case, go check it out. It's in the description, second link down below in the comments, second link in the comments, as well as on your screen. That eye, if you click the eye, it will take you, well, you can click on it there and take you to that video. But once you've got your Forge server, it should look something like this. And when you open it up, it should have a mods folder. If your server doesn't have a mods folder, you don't have a Forge server. So go to that video, get your Forge server set up. We cover it all in depth and it's super simple. But nevertheless, once you do have your Forge server, we will need to download some mods for that server. So in order to do that, you can go to the description. We have a link in the description to uh, some of the mods we're going to be installing. This will work with any 1.19.3 mod, but the ones we're installing are actually kind of helpful for servers in my opinion. First is the most helpful, and that is Spark. Spark will allow you to figure out why your server may or may not be lagging all in game by running a few simple commands. It's a must have for servers. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and click download here. And then on the right hand side, it'll take us to Curse Forge. On the right hand side, we can scroll down and download the under 1.19 Forge 1.19.3 version. It is important that for your Forge server here, you're downloading the Forge version of mods. If you uh, try to install a fabric version, it'll break things. It will just won't work. So nevertheless, keep that in mind. But Spark is now downloaded. Journey Maps, another amazing mod that you can have. I love to be able to see a world from a top down view, especially when it's a modded world and other stuff that's happening from other people. So go ahead ahead and click the download button here on journey map and again right hand side and download the 1.19.3 forge version right like so now the last mod we're going to be installing is biomes o plenty and biomes o plenty is a biome mod i wanted to install biome mod because they're super popular and sometimes they can require some intricate little details now if we go ahead and click on the download biomes o plenty there is actually a note here that uh, for servers you need to do something for 1.18 it actually requires no changes to the server dot properties like none at all. If it's for older versions, you do need to set the level type in the server properties. I'll show you where to open that and where to find it because other biome mods do still require that. Let's go ahead and download the 1.19.3 version of Biomes of Plenty. Terra Blender is required for Biomes of Plenty, so we want to download the 1.19.3 version of it as well. So nevertheless, that's all downloaded. Now, before we get this installed, you have to install every single mod that you install on your server locally in your Minecraft.Minecraft .minecraft mods folder as well. Unfortunately, so do all your friends. So everyone who joins your server has to have every single mod that's on your server installed locally in their Minecraft game. In order to do that, they'll need to download and install Forge. And of course, in the description, we have this. This is our in-depth guide for Forge. It's helped millions, millions of people get Forge up and running over the years. And this will help your friends as well. So if they have any issues, come here, go through this in-depth guide and have them go through this in-depth guide and they'll be able to get Forge up and running. We, we answer any questions they may have. I mean, it's super in-depth and, and we try our best to make all of our guides like that, but that is something your friends will have to do is install Forge. They'll also need to install the mods, which uh, is covered in this as well. So installing mods is, is covered. So go through that, have them go through this, and uh, you'll be good to go. Nevertheless, though, all our mods are downloaded. They're just in the downloads folder. And to find that, click the little Windows icon from the top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen, or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. Type in downloads, and uh, you might have a downloads folder. If you do, open that downloads folder up. Otherwise, click on File, Explorer, and then on the left hand side, under this PC, you'll have a downloads folder. Then in here, we have all of our mods drag and drop these to your desktop right like so. Now, it's actually pretty simple to install these mods. You probably inferred this earlier. When you open up your Minecraft modded Minecraft server folder, you just need to drag and drop them into this mods folder here. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I lost one of the mods there. Where'd it go? Hold on one second. Let me find, which one are we missing? Let me find it. Biomes of Plenty. That was important. I, I have no clue where this is. Let, let me find it really fast. I accidentally dragged it into the main server directory somehow. So we want to move that into our mods folder. Now, Biomes of Plenty, I think will work if a world's already generated. But I would recommend deleting your world folder uh, if you haven't already. If, if you've never used that world before, don't delete your world folder. If this is a clean server, you've never used this server before, and you want to add Biomes of Plenty to a brand new world, delete that world's folder, and that will happen. It will generate the world with the Biomes of Plenty biomes in it. Now, like I said, that server.properties, is right here. You just open this in Notepad, and in here you can find all of the different server settings, including the level type. So you can change the level type here, depending on the biome mod, in order to get those biomes. For example, it used to have to be, I think, biomes of plenty, uh, all one word, in order to work, but that doesn't have to be done anymore. 
Nevertheless, though, the mods are now installed on the server. You can start the server if you want, but you're not done. You need to install every single one of these mods locally as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Open up the Minecraft launcher, and then in the Minecraft launcher, we don't have to go in game to install these mods. We can do it directly from the launcher here uh, with just a few clicks. So in order to do that, once you're in the launcher, click on installations up here at the top. Most likely you have this Forge installation. If you don't, you didn't follow our Forge tutorial, I guess, so go get Forge installed locally in Minecraft here, and then click on the folder icon that appears when you hover over this. Now in here, you'll have a mods folder. If for whatever reason you don't have a mods folder, you can just create one. So right click, new folder, title it mods, M-O-D-S, all over case, exactly like that. And now what we wanna do is copy and paste. So on the right side over here, we have our local mods folder. On the left side, we can go ahead and open up our mods folder on our server. Now, we wanna go ahead and select all of these, right click, copy, then come over to the right-hand side, right-click, and paste, right like so. If you drag and drop them, it will remove them from one and, and all that stuff. So you want to right-click over here, copy them, and then paste them over here. Now, these are both installed locally in Minecraft and on the server. At this point, we can go ahead and double-click the run.bat file to start our server. We can also launch up Minecraft with Forge, right like so. We'll see you on the Minecraft main menu to show you that these mods are working. So here we are on the main menu, and if we click on multiplayer, click proceed, what is this? The breakdown at XYZ slash Apex. That's what happens to be our sponsor. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown at XYZ slash Apex to start your very own 24-hour DDoS-protected modded Minecraft server where you can easily add your own mods like we just did or install mod packs with just one click. Yes, one click installation of over 200 of the most popular Minecraft mod packs out there. We love just Apex so much that every Minecraft server we have is hosted on Apex Minecraft hosting, and truthfully, they are the best way to start your very own Minecraft server. If you do want to get your own server, look no further than Apex. They have 24 hours, seven day a week support. If you have any issues, it, it's truly incredible. So go check them out. First link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and join this server. We can direct connect, join on in. And then when we do, we'll see that these mods are in fact active. We'll be able to might even be lucky and yes, spawn into a bomb with plenty of bomb. I was really hoping that would happen. We can press J to pull up a journey map. And as you can see, that is already generating. And then we can also, what was the other one we installed? Spark. Now, the thing about Spark is that it is an amazing troubleshooting mod. Before we do that though, I do want to mention, every mod that's on your server must be installed for you locally and for anyone who joins your server locally. I may have mentioned that already, but it's worth stressing a few times. Everyone who joins your server must have every single mod that's installed on your server installed as well. Now you can send them to download links for all the mods and have them download them, or you can create a mod pack, assuming the creator of the mods that you have allows mod packs. You could create a mod pack and do that. So there's a few options there, but it is worth noting, everyone who joins your server must have all the mods installed locally in Forge, as well as have you install them on the server. So something to keep in mind, not just you has to have them installed locally like we did, everyone must have all the mods in their .minecraft mods folder in order for this to work. But the reason I've been running around for a second is we want to kind of get the server running. And then we can do slash spark and then profiler. Is spark not working? Oh, I don't have permissions. So I need to opt myself. So we can come over to the server, type op and then my username. And then there we go, start. So spark profiler start. It's not gonna run a profile, do a quick jump cut and we'll show you what this looks like. Like I said, a must have tool for a Minecraft server in my opinion. By the way, look how good that journey map looks. I love it. I love journey map, being able to see these modded worlds from a top down view, absolutely incredible. So it's now been a few minutes. We can do slash spark profiler stop and it's gonna spit out a link for us. And this is why every server should have this. And uh, whenever it spits out this link, we can click on it here it's not letting me click on links. There we go. So we can cl click on it here and it will open up in our browser where we can see our TPS for our server over this period. We can see the CPU usage, the memory usage, how much memory is used, the total system CPU over this time period. And at the bottom, we can actually break down the CPU usage of the server and what exactly could be lagging it. So if you have a mod that's causing a ton of lag, it's just one mod, Otherwise, the server would be fine. You can pinpoint that using this if you dig down deep enough. Now, obviously, uh, we don't actually have any lag. 20 TPS is perfect. It's literally what is considered perfect for a Minecraft server. So there is no lag. There's nothing really for us to look at here. But it is super important to have this, in my opinion, on our server because chances are your server will lag. And when it does, we do have this video in the description down below, which I, I don't have. We have a video in the description down below on how to fix Minecraft server issues. And that can help, but it's also important to run Spark and see exactly why it is in there so you can troubleshoot better. So nonetheless, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Check out the video on your screen right now, which is probably something amazing to do with the technical side of Minecraft, which is what we do here. And anyway, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.